Scott's Geography Notebook. Did you want to play something? Da, da, da. I'm going to talk a little bit about relative humidity. Now, relative humidity is well, a relative term. Um, because when we're thinking about the humidity that we have in our atmosphere, it really depends on two different things. And so we need to kind of understand these two different ideas. The first one is how much water, like how many individual water molecules are in the atmosphere. So how much is there? And when I say how much, that's going to be asking about um, how much or how many water molecules, how many water molecules are there. And then um, it doesn't always remain the same. Like how much can it hold? How much water vapor can air hold? Right, because when we're looking at both of these guys, the relative humidity, we need to understand how much is actually there and how much it can hold because that's always given in percentage, right? So if I had my graduated cylinder here, my beaker here, and it holds up to a thousand and I only had 500 in, then we could say, oh, it's 50% full. Or if I had 30 in out of a thousand, 300 in out of a thousand, then we'd say, oh, it's 30% full. Well, our air mass is kind of like this and it changes shape um, based on the temperature and the amount of water vapor that's actually in there changes as well. So let's start to understand these ideas a little bit more. The first thing that I want to talk about is the specific humidity. Specific humidity, abbreviated with an SH. That specific humidity is the actual, or the specific, actual amount of water vapor in... And I like to think about my air kind of enclosed because as we start to do the math, we're going to have to look at the temperature, all sorts of things like that. So the actual amount of water vapor in a parcel of air. Okay. Now, this number is given in usually grams of water. Okay. Now, that's going to be as a vapor grams of water per kilogram of air. Now, if we could take all of the air in a parcel, compact it down, and we are able to measure the weight of all of those molecules, we, we could get to a spot where we could measure it by a kilogram. Right? So one kilogram, how many grams of water per kilogram of air? And that's referred to as our specific humidity. That's going to be the actual water that's there. And the next thing that we want to think a little bit about is how much water vapor can that parcel hold? Okay? And we refer to that as the total ability to hold. No, the total holding capacity. Okay? And I do abbreviate that with a THC, the total holding capacity. Now, the total holding capacity is the amount of water vapor Uh, and, and I'm going to go back to my parcel again. An air parcel can hold, okay? This guy is also going to be expressed in grams of water per kilogram of air. But here's what's specific about this guy. This guy is a function of temperature, okay? And so what we know is that cold air holds less water vapor and warm air holds more. water vapor. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so 
I want to pull out a little graph that shows our total holding capacity. And this, uh, if you're in my lab class, is in lab number nine. We're going to pull it out and take a look at it here. This guy right here is showing our total holding capacity. And so what we have is we have our tabular data and we have it all plotted out. You'll notice that over here, we're going to have our temperature. And if our temperature is super cold at negative 40, then it's going to be hardly anything. 0.1 is my total holding capacity, my grams of water per kilogram of air. As it gets warmer, we'll go up to freezing. At zero, it can hold 3.5. So there we go. Then we go to five and it's at five. And then we go to 10 and it goes up to seven. And 15, it goes up to 15, it goes up to 10. 20 is at 14. 30 is at 26.5. 40 goes all the way up there to 47. Right. This little chart is something that is just made available to us, right? So it shows us the temperature and that total holding capacity. Okay, now what do we do with all of this? Well, what we need to do is we need to figure out the ratio between these two guys. So we have our specific humidity and our total holding capacity. Now that value that they give you when you listen to the news, they'll say what the relative humidity is. And then we'll give that to you in a percentage, okay? What we do to calculate our relative humidity is we take our specific humidity divided by our total holding capacity. <coughs> specific humidity and our total holding capacity, those two values that we have. This one is usually given to you. This one, you calculate based on temperature. And I say calculate, but really we just look at the chart. Or the graph, right? So we're going to be getting uh, those values, our specific humidity over total holding capacity. That's going to give us a ratio. If we multiply that times 100, then that will give us our percentage. Okay. So it's based on the amount of water vapor that is in the air compared to how much water vapor the parcel can hold. Throw those guys together into the equation and we're able to calculate our relative humidity. If we needed to define that, we'd probably say that ratio of the specific humidity and the ability uh, of an air, air parcel to hold water vapor expressed as a percentage. So I'm just using that specific humidity. We could say the ratio of the actual amount of water vapor in the parcel there. Um, and the ability of an air parcel to hold water vapor, that's all going to be our total holding capacity expressed as a percentage. Now, what we're going to find is that our specific humidity may stay the same. But even as we go through our day, the temperature is going to be changing. And so when it's very cold, this number is going to be lower. When it's early in the morning and it's chilly outside, we might have temperatures that are 5 degrees or 10 degrees outside. And there, our total holding capacity is only going to be about 7 However, we wait till later in the day and it warms up to 25 degrees and then our total holding capacity may be something more like 20. So the specific humidity may stay the same, but the total holding capacity certainly will change as we go through the day.